<laughs> My fellow Toastmasters, statistics are awesome. I did a little survey the other day sitting in Starbucks. I sipped my tea slowly and looked out the window and patiently counted people doing a particular act. I counted one, two, three, and sipped. Four, five, and sipped. In 30 minutes, I counted 17 instances of this particular act. Now I want to ask you, the audience, what do you think I was counting? What do you think I saw out the window? Any ideas? Cell phones, people on the cell phones. No, nope, very popular answer, more than that. Anything else? Babies, 17 babies. Babies were running by the window. No, no babies running by the window. Anyone else? Scooters on the sidewalk. Scooters on the sidewalk, <laughs> yes, definitely, but no. Spinning, yes, excellent. I saw 17 people spinning. Now, the body language was clear. There was a deep sucking in, followed by a visceral, full body expectoration. <laughs> now, let me do a quick word association with you. When I say the word spit, what do you think? What's the first word that comes to mind? Gross. Gross? Gross? Surely not. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am here tonight to tell you that you must reject peer pressure and embrace your spit. First of all, foreigners are so quick to judge. But spitting was once as common in the West as it is in Seoul. In the 1800s, morals dictated, and I quote, that it is better to spit than to swallow that which should be spat. <laughs> it was even okay to spit on the floors of hospitals. I've got a quote by a 1908 a health inspector, and he said, and I do quote, well, of course they spit on the floor. Where else do you expect them to spit? In their pockets? It's tempting. <laughs> but really, there is some sense of this. Why is there sense? Because look, the human body produces 1.5 liters of spit every day. Do you really want to swallow all of this? Oh. So, why the sudden change in the West? Why was there this change? Simple. The 1918 flu epidemic. What this did was it took what was a loose series of laws and turned it into a real cultural taboo. Much in the same way that smoking these days is becoming less and less common in bars. Both of them have a health concern underneath. Smoking causes cancer, and spitting can spread disease. But in both cases, the taboo is largely a cultural construct. What do I mean by this? The same friend who nowadays, if he saw you smoking, would be, oh my god, you're smoking. 20 years ago, that same friend would be asking you, hey, Cigarette. Yeah. The times have changed. The times have changed. But really, is this a good thing that the West is spreading these taboos worldwide? Is it a good thing? Before the Olympics, the mayor of Beijing, he actually pleaded with his city and he said, even one spitter can change and ruin the face of a nation. I, for one, still fondly remember spitting off the bridge with my friends and watching the fish come up from underneath, <laughs> thinking it was food, and they were wrong. But it was delicious, I'm sure. And <laughs> maybe not. And I want to ask you, who are we to steal that joy that we have lost from those who still have it? Second, we must consider the many, many positive uses of spit, even today. You have your word associations for spit, gross, disgusting, whatever, and I have mine. My first association is cleansing. Our restoration today is done with spit. We take the Q-tip, dip it, and slowly clean away the layers of dust and grime from the painting. Perhaps all of the spitting in Seoul is an attempt to do the same with yellow dust. Food for thought. Second, cultural. The sociologist Robert McCarl stated that spitting is not simply something coming out of your mouth, 
but it is also a way of marking our space. In a city as crowded as Seoul, who are we to judge those who would try to carve out their own peace? This space is mine. <laughs> Third, alcoholic. The kava drink of Peru, traditional drink, of Vanuatu, the traditional drink, it's made by taking plants, chewing them up, and spitting them out into a bowl. And they stay in this bowl, and they ferment. The enzymes in human spit are what allows it to become alcoholic. Literally, they drink <sighs> spit. And I am thinking that we have a vast, untapped market of a new form of organic soju. <laughs> delicious, delicious, and well-being. Mm. Number four, very, very quickly, we have athletics. Cherry spinning is a Guinness Book world record event. The world record currently is 29 meters, all the way from here to my friends in the back of the room with the timer. 29 meters, amazing. And I'm thinking with all their practice, this is a sport like Taekwondo or uh, archery, where Koreans can excel. I've already got a champ prepared. I'd like some help with this. I'm going to say spit, you say yeah. Very simple, spit, yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right, spit. Yeah. You mean spit. Yeah. Spit. Yeah. To sum up, the prohibitions against spitting are merely cultural constructs imported from the West which completely disregard all of the positive values of spitting. This sentiment was held as well by the Boxer Rebellion in China in 1900. And they actually had a slogan which went, Certainly, the Western soldiers are many. However, if each of our people spits but once, in that volume of spit, they will drown. <laughs> How many of you swallowed your spit today during my speech? Don't be shy. <laughs> Pablo Picasso himself stated, if I spit, they will take my spit and put it up on a wall and frame it. My fellow Toastmasters, tonight I challenge you to go out into the streets of Seoul and make great art. Thank you very much.